Hi, this is Mike Carter with Carter Custom Knives. First of all, I haven't uploaded a video lately, and I want to thank everybody who has been watching and all my subscribers. You know, my video channel has uh, surpassed uh, half a million views on uh, New Year's Day 2015, so I really appreciate it, I, and I, I get a lot of feedback. Um, I'm really glad I'm able to help some people out and they enjoy my videos. So um, I plan to keep doing it as much as I can find time to do it and uh, have ideas on something interesting to do. Today it happens to be a little too cold to be out in the shop working. Um, so since I'm kind of stuck in the house, I thought I'd just do a quick video about blade geometry 101. Okay, here are your basic five grind types. You've got a flat grind, Scandi grind, convex grind, hollow grind, and a chisel grind. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about each one. Flat grind, as you see on the left here, it's just a uh, basically a straight flat grind all the way from the point all the way up to the spine of the blade. Uh, you know, in a way, this is an easier one to sharpen if you want to take your primary, your main bevel all the way down to the edge, because all you have to do is lay it flat on a stone and sharpen it. Um, the Scandi grind is basically the same thing. It's a flat grind, except it doesn't go all the way up the blade. Normally it goes about a half or three quarters of the way up the blade, and then you've got the flat of the blade. But other than that, it's basically a flat grind. Um, just for me personally, that happens to be one of the hardest grinds for me to do right. Uh, it seems like I, you know, I'm trying to make them even. I'll grind one a little too far, have to do a little bit more on the other side, and the grind keeps going further and further up the blade. It's just a difficult grind for me to do, but I do all my grinding freehand. I think you'll find that most people who do a Scandi grind are using some type of a jig or guide or something that will uh, help get those uh, you know, perfectly even. Next we have the convex grind, which is basically, as you can see, just an outward curve from the edge all the way up, just a nice gentle curve. And I generally do this on the slack part of the belt. When the belt gives a little bit, that just naturally takes that shape and gives you that nice convex grind. Then you have the hollow grind, which is really the opposite of the convex grind. It's a concave grind. And this grind actually uh, kind of takes on the shape of the wheel that you're grinding it with. And, you know, a bigger wheel gives you a bigger radius, which will make this a more shallow uh, curve. Or sometimes you can grind two of them, and uh, actually two grinds, and blend them together. Um, but the further up you take it up the blade, the bigger the radius you have, the more uh, less pronounced the uh, curve is going to be. And then finally we have the chisel grind, which is basically a flat grind or a Scandi grind only on one side of the blade. You can see the other side is perfectly flat. Uh, some people prefer it. Uh, to me, that's probably my least favorite type of grind. My favorite, my personal favorite, is the hollow grind for most applications. Now, if you're doing something that's really... Uh, uh, making something is really for heavy-duty chopping, the convex grind is probably going to be your best bet. It just has more meat behind the edge here, uh, just a lot of more heavy-duty, and if you notice, an axe will be ground this way. But for most general purpose use, uh, I like the hollow grind, and I'll go into that a little bit about, about why in just a minute. Now, speaking of the length of your grind, as you can see here on this flat grind example, where I've got one at uh, one inch long and one at one and a half inches long, you can see how the angle changes. Um, you know, at the one inch mark, you're getting wider. 
here on the shorter grind than you are on the longer grind. It's just longer and thins it out a little bit more. So that's something else to consider is how long, how, how long your grind's going to be. It will change your angle or change your radius somewhat. Thickness is another big thing to consider. And I tend to make a lot of, uh, you know, big heavy duty knives, quarter inch steel, sometimes three eighth inch thick steel. And, you know, it's a simple fact that you, you know, the thicker the steel is, you can't get it as sharp as real thin steel. And I always try to explain it, think of terms of a razor blade. That's what everybody compares to. They want it razor sharp. Well, think about a razor blade. It's very, very thin. It's also very weak, very brittle. Breaks easily. It's dull after it shaves hair a few times. So the thinner you get, yes, the, the sharper edge you can get, you're going to have less resistance as you go. the blade goes down through something. It's going to cut easier. So you can see the difference here on a... Uh, say a quarter inch thick blade versus a one eighth inch thick blade. And it's also something I point out where I do a clip point or what some people call a false edge on a knife. You know there you're coming from a pretty thick piece of steel and, and you know, in my case usually a quarter inch and your grind's only going to be quarter inch deep. So you're going to get a very steep bevel there, a very steep angle. And obviously I'm not going to get this I mean, everything's going to come down to a zero edge, but this is not going to be as sharp as this. So thickness is another thing to consider. And generally when people are sharpening knives, they're, um, you know, you've got your primary bevel, which is your main grind, and then usually when they actually finish up and sharpen the knife, they're actually putting a secondary bevel on it. And you can see the difference in angle there. But this is your real cutting edge here on this uh, secondary bevel. And that can either be just a flat grind, like if you sharpen it on a stone, or use one of these uh, Lansky type sharpening systems or um, wicked edge systems that going to put a very pre precise flat bevel on that uh, secondary bevel. Or you could uh, do it on a slack belt or sandpaper taped over a mouse pad, something like that. That's going to give you this slightly convex, a little bit rounded edge. It's not a precise angle, precise bevel, but it's still coming in at a stronger angle than your primary bevel is. Um, kind of depends on what you want. Some people want that scary sharp edge and that kind of comes back to the razor blade analogy. Yeah, the sharper you get it, the more fragile it's going to be. Or you can get a working edge that's not going to be quite as scary sharp, but it's going to hold that edge better. And you can see that illustrated here if, if you just, if you could magnify this in your mind that how quickly you're getting away from this zero edge here where versus a convex edge you know you just got a little more meat here behind the edge. Now one more thing I'll show you one of the reasons I like a hollow grind is you'll notice here when you're cutting through something as that blade is going down through whatever you're cutting how quickly, especially for instance on the convex grind, how quickly you're getting into up into thicker and thicker blade steel. You see it on the Scandi and the flat grind, but look at the hollow grind. You're going pretty far up the blade before you get into noticeably thicker steel. So that blade goes further down into something before it starts getting that wedge effect and starts separating it which I think gives you less resistance, gives you a cleaner cut. I just think it performs better. And another thing to consider there is, you know, if you've seen a really old knife that's been sharpened a thousand times, you're actually taking metal off that edge of that blade. And as you go up the blade, you're getting into thicker and thicker steel. 
and that changes your edge geometry just like we illustrated over here you know if you start getting into thicker steel your angle changes your geometry changes entirely so that's another reason I like the hollow grind is just for cutting and as you sharpen and take metal off that edge over time you go a lot further up the blade before you start getting that noticeable difference in uh, edge geometry and difference in angle. So that's my little uh, edge geometry 101 tutorial. Um, pretty basic stuff, but hopefully somebody um, got something out of it, found it a little useful in some way. Um, hopefully when the weather breaks a little bit I'll get back out in the shop and uh, maybe make some more videos and uh, uh, come up with something a little more interesting for you but uh, it's been a while since I've uh, had a chance to post anything on YouTube so uh, I wanted to get something up there and again say thanks for everybody who has been watching and all my subscribers and uh, I hope you found this useful in some way this is Mike Carter with Carter Custom Knives thanks for watching